Looks like trouble. Lady Luck is smiling. All or nothing. It's my lucky day. Always on the run. Hey guys, welcome back. We are playing Twisted Fate today. It is a champion known for his ability to carry through global map pressure. So if you want to improve your macro, then this is a champion that I can highly recommend that you pick up. So his passive gives him bonus gold whenever he kills an enemy. And then we start with the E ability guys, and this will give him permanent bonus attack speed. And then every fourth order attack is also going to deal bonus damage. We start with this ability because it allows him to pressure the opponent early on. And it's even better if the opponent is a melee champion. Your W uh, will make it so you rotate between three different cards and the order of the cards will always be a blue, red, yellow. And which card you start with when you play a press W is random but the order will always be the same. So the blue card is the one that deals the highest amount of damage and it also restores mana. So this is something that you can use uh, when you're farming so you can like restore mana um, so you can constantly uh, poke the opponent. And the red card deals AoE damage and it also slows. This is something that you want to be using when you want to push out the waves. Um, so this basically works as your wave clear. But you can also use it, um, for example, when the opponent team is uh, stacking up in a single spot. Because then you can like hit all of them with the AoE damage. And then we have the yellow card. This is the one that stuns. It's like your point and click uh, stun ability. This is what you use when you gank people or when your jungler is coming to gank you. Then you want to have that yellow card ready. Um, so you can like hit the opponent, stun them and that should be a free kill. Your Q is a long range um, AoE ability. Um, he throws out three cards in different um, uh, spots and it deals AoE damage. Um, so this also works as your way clear. And it's also really good for poking the opponent with uh, because of its super high range. So your Q combined with your W, the red card, that's basically all of your wave clear. So when you want to push out waves, then you have the red card ready, you try to hit as many minions as possible, and then you follow up with a Q, and the minion wave should be gone later on in the game. When you trade with your opponent guys, then you want to be using the yellow card most of the time, because that is a stun. So you stun people first, and then you throw out the Q afterwards, because it's a skill shot, otherwise they will be able to dodge it. So you stun the opponent, then you hit them with a Q, and then one auto attack, and that is a free electrocute proc. That's how you trade with your opponent. Play around the keystone, um, and when it's ready, that's when you can go for trades. But remember, Twisted Fate is not a champion that you pick up to win the lane with. You want you pick him to win the map. The entire goal um, after you get level 6 is just to perma shove and then you just look to roam. Um, the minion dematerializer, we have that because we want to improve the wave player. So use all of them on the caster minions because that will allow our Q to one shot the minions earlier on. Now this is um, super important, what you have to do here is that when you are level 5, that's when you want to reset. That's something you want to do every single game guys because your ultimate costs a lot of mana. So you want to reset so you make sure that you are full mana and full health and you also spend all of your gold because then you have as much damage as possible so when you teleport um, you have much higher chances of actually getting the kill. Getting Dark Seal and Lucidity Boots just like a perfect base uh, because now we are ready to teleport once we get that level 6 so always reset at level 5. Every single game this is something you have to play around. Every single game when you play Twisted Fate because this is the perfect base timer. So your goal now, um, when you're about to hit level 6, just constantly show out the waves and then just look to roam. Um, because your ultimate allows you to teleport. First cast of your ultimate um, is going to give you true vision, um, showing you all of the enemy champions, no matter where they are on the map. So even if somebody is invisible, like Talon in his ultimate or Akali in the W, it is going to reveal them. And then you can recast that ability and that is going to teleport you. If you want to see the range of that ultimate, the teleporting range, then you can just hover the cursor over the R ability icon. 
Show the waves and then room. Twisted Fate is really, really good at counter ganging the enemy jungler when he gets level 6. So you really want to make sure they have extremely good map awareness because then you can pull off stuff like this. Um, otherwise, this Fiora would have died if I was not here. So you can already see how much pressure um, you're able to have with this champion. This is how you want to carry with him. It is not a champion that has a lot of damage. He has really good wave clear, he has really good CC, and he's really good at roaming. So that's what you want to abuse. We got a kill like this and we also snowballing the top laner and the jungler as well. So now we want to get the next item that is the Everfrost. Um, you get the Everfrost because um, when you hit somebody um, with the gold card and stun them then you can also use the Everfrost right after so they get rooted as well so you get like even more CC. So it becomes like a CC bot but I also like to get the Dark Seal and if I get that stacked I build it to upgrade it to the mid ice and then we also have a lot of damage. So the entire goal after level 6, just shove. And even if you don't have your ultimate up, or even if you cannot roam even though it's up guys, just shove and then go out of vision. Because when you go out of vision, um, the opponent does not know when your ultimate is up. So they will be constantly spam pinging their teammates to back off. So already that is going to apply so much pressure on the opponent, so just stay out of vision. You can even just hide in the fog of war um, when you push out the wave, that's what you have to do all the time. Because that's going to apply so much pressure to the other laners and even even if they have like a winning laner in the top lane for example when you go out of vision they will be forced to back off so that's going to give your teammates some free time to get some farm and get back into the game and when you do teleport with that ultimate um that's like a short delay before you appear so try to like teleport behind the opponents you know in the direction you think they will be escaping towards so they will end up running into you and that's going to be a free gold card, meaning a free stun and then your teammates can follow up. That's how you want to play it and that's how you secure those kills. It's an ability that you want to be using off cooldown and that ultimate because of how powerful it is. Um, so really make sure that you have good map awareness. Um, you can also make use of the F keys guys like F1, F2, F3 and so on. Because if you hold one of these keys down, it's going to show the camera from your teammates perspective. So you can like see the state of their lane. Like is the opponent going to push? Is your teammates going to push? Are they healthy or not? And then you can figure out if you want to TP or not. Also when you shower the waves, you can also just get into the enemy jungle. Try to get some vision down or pop the um, cones here so you can like get some vision, the blast plant. Um, so you also make sure it's harder for them to roam or uh, look for ganks. Now, a lot of stuff you can do, you can also use it to get some vision down in the jungle. This is what I do when I push. Even if I cannot roam right now, I'm just staying out of vision uh, until the next wave comes. Because as I said, it is going to apply so much pressure on the enemy. So make sure that when you show out the wave, you just don't FK mid. Even if you cannot roam, then just stay out of vision because that already is going to apply so much pressure. It is a champion that's going to teach you a lot about uh, map awareness and macro in general guys. So if that's something you struggle with, um, then I can highly recommend that you pick up TF. Um, you're really going to learn a lot and you can apply that knowledge to every single champion you play. Just show out the waves with a red card and a Q and then auto attack the remaining uh, minions and then you can just look for roams or you can recall. It's going to be even more fun once you have the Everfrost um, because that's why you get that perma CC. So like you hit somebody with a gold card and then you also get that guaranteed root when you hit people with a send off the Everfrost. And if you pull that off in a single team fight guys like you hit a carry or something they are 100% dead. I actually thought that Udia recalled right here, uh, but he managed to uh, sneak around. Because we did see him for like uh, a half, like one second or so. But I did not expect him to stay for that long, so he caught us off guard. It is what it is, now we're sitting on a lot of gold. Unfortunately, we did lose the Dark Seal stacks. We're sitting on a lot of gold. And 
and that of course means that we can get the Everfrost and that's why the fun part begins. Everfrost is also really cheap, um, that's also another good thing about this and then it also provides that extra CC. So in the mid game and such you become like a CC bot and we just perma CC the opponent. Just show and room, that's what you gotta do but you also gotta be smart about it, remember that that ultimate does give you um, true sight, so even if somebody is invisible, it will reveal them, so you don't always have to use it like for teleporting with, also if um, you see your jungler fighting somebody who's invisible, you can also just pop that ultimate to like help them out. Remember that you can rotate your W while your ultimate is active, um, so you can like let it rotate and then you can Select the right card while you're teleporting, you can also do that before, um, it depends, but you can do either and both works. It like helps you get the right card ready, um, so when you teleport then the opponent is going to get insta stunned. This what you gotta do is that before you teleport, spam ping your teammates that you're coming, because otherwise it can be pretty hard for them to see especially if they are in the fight already. Um, so if you are spamming that you're coming, then there's a much higher chance that they are seeing it and then they will also be able to react to it. Like, use like a couple pings before your TP. So like, make them move up um, because it can also help bait out the opponent's movement abilities because maybe they'll try to engage on your teammates and if they do so, then that's a guaranteed kill for when you TP. You have insanely good wave clear because your Q will one shot the backline minions thanks to the minion dematerializer so you have really good wave clear. As soon as you max out the Q and that means that you can push out waves really fast so even when you don't have your ultimate up you can still look for roams. I tried to uh, help out my teammates here, that's of course a big mistake, I should not have done that. Um, because they had too many players in the bottom side, um, so that's something you had to avoid doing. Um, if your teammates make that big of a mistake, then most of the time just let them die, because um, it's not worth it if you die. Um, as the mid laner, because you need that prior, and you control the map as well. Especially when you play TF, um, so if you die, then that's really going to give the opponent uh, some breathing room for them to uh, catch back. When the ultimate is up, really try to use it off cooldown, um, it's not something you can do every single time, but when you can, really look for those roams in the silence. Um, it's even easier if you have somebody with CC, um, for example if your support is playing Alyssa, Leona and such, or Nautilus, um, because they're really easy to gank, um, they can set up um, the opponents for you, so that's even better. But if your bot lane doesn't have any CC and they have a super mobile bot lane, that's probably really difficult to pull off that gank. Then maybe you can just look on uh, top side or the enemy jungle as well. Also try to think about how easy it will be for you to um, get the kill when you roam. And then figure out whether it's worth it or not. If you see how I teleport, I always try to TP behind the opponent. Because they will be running into me, like towards me. And then that's a free gold card, free arrow frost and a free kill. Remember, you also want to roam at the right time, um, so if you're not able to show the waves, then you of course can't really roam, because if you do, then the opponent is going to show in the waves and then they're gonna take your plates. Now they expire, of course, they expire at 14 minutes, but if you try to pull this off in the early game, they're gonna really punish you, because if they get a lot of plates, then they already get a massive lead, so always try to show out the wave before you roam. Also like try to look at your minions uh, coming from the base to a lane uh, because it shows you the position of the enemy minion wave as well because they always spawn at the same time. Um, so you can see how much time you have to roam before those minions get back into the lane. It's of course better if you can like kill the wave instantly um, as soon as they get into the lane because that gives you more time to uh, roam. We got the Sonyas, so it's like uh, for extra safety, some people like to get the Rapid Fire Cannon. 
uh, because it gives you extra auto attack range but it feels like you have almost no damage when you get it super early on um, so what you can do is that you can also get the Lich Bane before you get the Fire Cannon um, it's preference but um, Elf Frost into Sonya's is like a core and then you can get Lich Bane if you want more damage or you can get Rapid Fire Cannon if you want that extra attack speed and that extra range you buy it because it increases your auto attack range so that also works with your W, the gold card so that you can like get some long range stuns off but it is going to lower the damage on your abilities so that's why some people like to get like um, after Sonya's Hourglass they try to get the Lich Bane and then they get the Rapid Fire Cannon that's also something you can do Just show out the wave, so we like in the mid game, meaning that you want to be sidelining as much as possible. Um, because you have global map pressure, so you want to like force the enemy mid laner to come bot to defend against you. And then you can TP mid or something when the fight starts, so you have like the numbers advantage. You just spend as much time in the sideline as possible. And if you become really good at counter ganging, then you can pull off stuff like this and really save your teammates. Uh, because this is what really rewards uh, you and carries the game when you can do stuff like this. And I can guarantee you that if you keep doing this in the game then it is going to tilt the enemy jungler so much. Um, especially when you counter gang them, when you use that ultimate to invade them with and take away the camps as well. Um, that is really going to um, tilt them so much. Because roaming is like one of the easiest ways to tilt uh, the enemy players. Not just the jungler, also the laners as well. If you just keep roaming to one laner over and over, that is going to make them so mad. Um, so that's also another way that you can um, get those free wins with. So when you go rapid fire cannon, of course, you're losing some damage. You do get some like extra burst damage and you also get that attack speed and auto attack range. But you don't have that consistent damage on your abilities because you don't build AP for a while. So you're gonna fall a bit behind the damage curve, that's why I like to get the mid eyes. Of course make sure that you do have some stacks on it, because if you don't have any stacks then don't upgrade it, because then it's a waste of gold. But this is completely fine to do, because then it's okay to get the rapid fire cannon without losing a lot of damage. But Sonya's Hourglass kinda enables your um, backline teleporting player style where you can TP behind the enemy team, gold card the carry and then you can just pop that Hourglass so people cannot target you. So the flash is down on the enemy mid laner, meaning that it's going to be easier to set him up for the next gank. But spend as much time as possible in the silence. Of course you also get a lot of gold for yourself, um, that passive, that free gold regeneration or generation passive means that every single time you kill a unit you get some extra gold. So just by going even with the opponent you are still winning the lane. Because you will have so much uh, more gold than them. And of course you can extend that lead even further by being in the side lane because then you get all that gold for yourself meaning that you don't have to share it with the AD carry in the mid lane. So the Fiora is snowballing because of that play we pulled off earlier on, um, really snowballed her lead and Master Yi as well, so it's a champion that enables his teammates as well as himself. It's not a champ that you pick like to destroy the opponent in a 1 vs 1 in the mid lane. Sometimes you pick up random kills and sometimes you won't, but realistically um, you pick up the kills by roaming with the ultimate, or when your jungler comes to gang and you set him up with a gold card. Then the silence, push out the waves, constantly split push and then when your ultimate is ready that's when you look for a play. Um, wait for the right moment, you can also just um, press the ultimate and then look where the enemy team is at and then if somebody so extended you can go for the kills but be careful that you don't get baited it um, because um, Twist of Fate is not a champion that does very well in 1 vs 2s. So if you go for those 1 vs 2s then you most likely end up dead. 
and that's not really worth it. You want to like um, take the opponent, like catch them by a um, surprise, and then if you kill the enemy jungler, maybe you turn that into a free dragon, a free tower, even better, free baron. And that's how you snowball the game. So wait for the right opportunity, wait for the opponent to overextend, and then you can TP in. We still need a bit more gold for that rapid fire cannon. Um, if you don't know why it's bought, it's because it gives you that extra auto attack range whenever it's fully stacked and that works for your W gold card so you get some long range stun stuff. So pretty much sacrificing some damage, but it's actually really OP in team fights because um, you will always be able to hit somebody because even though they know that you have this item, they never expect that range. But like if somebody's so extended, then you will instantly be able to like catch them by, by surprise. And this is the right play by my teammates. So they see the enemy team in the bottom side of the map. So we all instantly went to the Baron. Um, that's how you want to punish those plays that the opponents make. Um, so that's a good move, allowing us to get that free Baron, and then of course you can keep pushing in the top side. Um, you can also recall. Um, we want that rapid fire cannon, of course, because that's also a big power spike, especially in those team fights. So now we got it. Now we get some long range gold cards off. Um, so like you can catch pretty much every single target in a team fight. It's very hard to like escape from it. Because they never expect that auto attack range. So one long range gold card followed up by the arrow frost and then your teammate CC and that target should be dead. So Twisted Fate is like a perfect example um, of why you don't always need damage to carry fights. Like utility is also such a underrated um, in the league uh, because just that CC long range CC alone is enough to carry a fight. You catch the carry like you catch the Astir or the uh, Jinx, CC them and they're going to be dead right and then you're taking out a carry from the fight and that's almost a guaranteed win. Rampage. Just keep shoving out the waves we do have the Baron buff minions I am still spending a lot of time in the silence because you want to pressure as much as possible and when you get the Lich Band then you can also take down those objectives really fast because it has synergy with your W like a blue card with a Lich Band proc on an enemy squishy that's going to burst them because the blue card is the one that has the highest burst damage and the best skilling as well And this is why you have the Sonya's Hourglass, you can pull off stuff like this, even if you're losing the fight, just pop the active and then your teammates can finish them off. Here comes another gold card and that is going to um, secure you so many free kills honestly. Um, so that's why it's so important that in fights you mainly focus on getting the gold cards off. Um, just hold it down, you don't have to select the card immediately, um, just keep it rotating and then you can use it when you really need it. And that is how you want to carry with Twisted Fate. You want to carry with global map pressure and in the team fight you carry with your superior CC. That's on a very low cooldown and that's a point and click and buildy. Just hit whoever is um, overextended, even if it's the frontliner because you have somebody like a Master E who can easily shred them. But the main thing when you teleport in team fights, you want to go for the carries, um, especially if it's a fit one. So if you don't get the Major Soul Stealer, normally you get the Lich Bane. Um, so at some point we will end up selling the Major Soul Stealer and then we can get the Lich Bane. And then you can also get the Void Staff. Um, really depends if they're buying magic resistance or not. If they have like a tanky team, then of course you want the uh, Void Staff. For the Magic Pen, but Rabidon's Death Cap really gives you so much burst damage um, against a single target, even multiple targets if you get the AoE damage off.
You're still needing a bit more gold for the Rabadons. You can still split push in the silence when your ultimate is up, even if you have the Baron buff, or even if you don't, doesn't really matter. Still want to pressure as much as possible in the silence. But do be careful because you are immobile, so people will be looking to gank you a lot. Your wave clear is really good, um, you have some of the best wave clear in the early game. Um, that is of course what makes Twisted Fate really strong. Um, because most champions will not be able to match it, um, so that's why you can help Pryo early on in the game and you can really abuse that to help out your jungler as well. Like if they're contesting the skull crab or they're trying to invade or something, you can show out the wave in the mid lane and then you can just roam with them. Because if you first set the enemy jungle behind, then it's almost GG's, like the game is almost over. Still needing a bit more gold for the uh, Rabbinus Death Gap, as soon as we have it, that's another big spike. Um, you can like use the blue card if you want to burst, um, like you stack up the E passive for that empowered auto attack, and then combine that with the blue card and a Q. Um, that's something you can do if the opponent is face checking you and you know that you have enough damage because otherwise um, you don't have any stun so they can like dodge your Q. But for the highest burst damage then the blue card is the one you had to use. Highest base damage as well as the best scaling. I think it has something like 90% AP scaling so it's a lot more damage than the other cards but that does not mean that you're going to use it in a fight. Because utility is a lot more important, you go cut somebody and your teammates will be able to uh, clean up. Now we're gonna get the rabbit on stealth cap and that's pretty much GG's sitting on a lot of AP. That's of course the biggest AP item that you can get in the late game because it gives you so much AP, so much burst damage. It makes sure that you stay up um, with the damage curves so you don't fall behind. And if people are buying MR at this point, then of course you also want the watch stuff, watch stuff. You can also get the anti-healing, but it's a lot better if somebody else buys it, like the Nami. And then she can, um, she can get that anti-healing um, AP support item that she has right now. That's a lot better than if we had to buy it, because then we don't need to waste gold on that and can instead focus on getting the core items. So I want to group with the teammates on Twisted Fate um, when your ultimate is not up because then it is quite risky to split push um, so make sure that you're not staying too far away from your teammates and then you can also use your ultimate like this just to get some vision down so you can like, see what's happening on the map because if the opponents are trying to sneak the Baron and you don't have any vision then your ultimate is like the only way where you can actually see what's happening. Make sure that you farm constantly, um, I always try to pick up the farm in the sidelines. Otherwise you're gonna end up with really low CS numbers and then you might also fall behind in XP. Especially in games where you are winning already and you have already taken down the enemy inhibitor. Because that means that your minions will constantly kill the enemy minions and they will push into the enemy base. So the opponents will be getting free XP and farm while you will be losing it. That's why it's super important that you constantly make sure to farm the uh, waves. You can also flank with a twist of fate, just like this. Especially when people are forced to face check for the Baron. You can just camp in the brushes, get a gold card off, follow up with the Aerofrost and bam, they should be gone. Just want to split push uh, with your team, or like push with your team. Because the opponent's down, you can siege with them. He's also really good at sieging because you have that long range goal card. Just hit any target or extend it, poke them with a WQ. And yeah, this is pretty much how you play Twisted the Fate. Really play for that global map pressure. And as I said, he really helps with that macro as well. So it's a champion that I can highly recommend you to pick up if you really want to improve at the game. But this was how to play TF. I hope this was helpful. As always, thanks for watching and see y'all in the next one.